Hi, my name is Devi Billamkunda. I'm working as a technical marketing engineer focusing on Cisco Software Defined Access. Today in this video, we're going to see uh, why we need layer 2 flooding in SD Access Fabric and how to enable it. The SD Access Fabric provides many optimizations to improve unicast traffic flows and to reduce the unnecessary flooding of data inside the fabric. And one of the optimizations is the ARP suppression. While traditional ARP flooding is okay in a smaller scale subnets in a traditional enterprise networks, but this would be a very bandwidth consuming process in a larger networks. And Cisco SD Access deployment, this is totally addressed. But for some traffic and application types, it may be desirable to enable broadcast forwarding within the SD Access fabric. By default, this is disabled in the SD Access architecture and if broadcast propagation is required, it must be specifically enabled on a per subnet basis using the layer 2 flooding feature. Once the broadcast is enabled in a subnet, uh, an underlay multicast group is associated with that virtual network and all fabric nodes will join this multicast group. So when a broadcast frame is received by the fabric edge node, it is then encapsulated in the VXLAN and forwarded to all the remote edge nodes via the underlay multicast group. The remote edge nodes will then de-encapsulate the original broadcast frame and forward it to the all local switch ports in the appropriate subnet. This feature is desired in environments which has applications relying on broadcasts and may require flooding of traffic in layer 2 domain such as silent hosts, card, card readers, door locks, etc. Here in this demo topology, we have an SD access fabric site which is up and running. We have two hosts who are successfully authenticated in the fabric and they have an IP address of 172.16.8.2 and 172.16.8.4 and we are doing a packet capture on the 8.2 and we are pinging from 8.4 and uh, broadcast IP address for this subnet which is 172.16.8.255 and also the link local address and we are going to see what happens when we have layer 2 flooding enabled and when we do not have the layer 2 flooding enabled. Without the layer 2 flooding enabled, even though we have a constant ping of this broadcast traffic from the host, we are not able to see any of the broadcast traffic on the 172.16.8.2 host. And now we are going to see how to enable the layer 2 flooding inside the SD access fabric. As we discussed earlier, and this is my virtual network of campus and I am enabling the layer 2 flooding for this specific subnet. And once you enable this, we can view if the layer 2 flooding is enabled for the subnet or not. Once the layer 2 flooding is enabled, I can see the link local and the broadcast packets on the 172.16.8.2 host coming from 8.4. So now that we have the broadcast enabled for this specific subnet inside a virtual network. This is how we enable layer 2 flooding feature inside the SD access fabric. Thank you.